let's go. It's time to be the GOAT. It's time to enter God mode, man. Let's get it going. I want to be the greatest. All right, guys. Andy Elliott, One Percenter Podcast. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a badass. This is an underdog. Truly, every single one of you right now, you have no idea what's possible. But when Nick tells you what he did, you're going to be like, damn, man, I'm playing small. It's time to wake up. Or if you are kicking ass, maybe you might say, maybe I need to kick some more ass. Okay, so I want to tell you, number one, I'm going to introduce Nick. Nick, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having He's me. He's a badass, and I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about what he does. But I want to tell you, I got introduced to him. So you guys know I have a very good friend. His name's Brad Lee. Brad Lee is one of my great friends. He's Our kids are best friends. Um, he's a big influencer. He's got lots of businesses. And we run together. And so anyways, my wife, she's got a Lamborghini. I was like, oh, let's get her a Ferrari for Mother's Day. I find one. I think I'm like, I like this. And I call Brad. Brad's like, dude, don't buy it. He's like, stop. You got to call Nick. Nick's the dude. And I'm like, well, who's Nick? He's like, dude, Nick's like the biggest exotic import car person. Whatever the hell you need, he's your dude. And I'm like, okay. So I live in Scottsdale. He lives in Vegas. And, but that doesn't matter. He can find these cars all around the world. But, he, but he, Brad goes, call him. So I call him literally within 10 minutes. He's like, dude, I got your car. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I got your car. This is it. He sent me pictures, sent me video, sent me everything. Less miles, 70000 less than the car we're looking at. And when you're looking at half a million dollar car, 70000 that's how it works. Some people buy $70,000 cars. This car was $70,000 less than the other one I was looking at. It was everything I wanted. Nick's like, dude, I can get it. It's done. Here we go. There it is. Boom. It's in Orange County. Bam. Shipped it here. Wow. They just dropped it off. Bo, trailer. Nick's here. I'm like, dude, in a world full of just shitty customer service, this guy just smashed it. Um, so I want to tell you, I now want to introduce you to Nick. Not only because I want you guys to do business with him because he took such good care of me. I know he's going to take such good care of you. But when you hear his story, okay, so he took care of my family. Anybody takes care of my family, you guys know I'm going to vouch for it. Now I want them to take care of your family. Um, I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of Nick later. More importantly, I want to tell Nick's story. Because when Nick did all this for me, you know, and he's got this big exotic dealership, I'm like, you know, what's this guy's roots, right? Like, where is he from? And I'm going to let him tell you. It's a super cool story. It's going to inspire you to want to reach for more and to realize you even had to start over at certain points in life. Twice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that like, dude, human beings are resilient. They can do anything. And this channel is made to bring you value and to show you that today your life changes and your best life starts now. 100%. So, Nick, much love, bro. You're a family to me now. Um, let's talk a little bit about where you are now, the name of your dealership, where you're located, how they can get in contact with you, and then dive straight into your story. All right. So uh, it's Vegas Auto Gallery and Lotus Las Vegas. Uh, we're the largest exotic dealer on the West Coast. Um, we're based out of Vegas. We have three locations currently, and we have been, the new location that we're opening is going to be the largest probably in the state of Nevada for indoor showroom alone. Mm -hmm. We carry about 300 cars indoor, state-of-the-art facility, right on the 215 it's it's most badass place whatever you want you can get yeah right? anything you name it um so what's your website vegasautogallery.com okay vegasautogallery.com if they want to personally message you on instagram hey nick i'm looking for this what instagram is that nick.dosa nick.dosa how do you spell dosa d-o-s-s-a d-o-s-s-a nick.dosa d-o-s-s-a if you wanted to dm go nick i'm looking for this can you help me bam there you go you're connected directly to him what about your personal or your business Instagram? What is that? That's at Vegas Auto Gallery. And then we also have at Lotus Cars Las Vegas. Good. I love it. Okay, cool. All right. So number one, you guys know how to get in contact with him. Okay. He's a badass. You guys need to do business with him. Buy all your shit from him. Highly recommend him. All right. Let's get to the story. Because the story, by the way, I'm super proud of you, what you're doing now. Most people want to just talk about what you're doing now forever. Yeah. And I really want to talk about how you built what you have now. I want to know what you went through. I want to know the story, how it worked. And there's a lot of people that are in the same shoes that you were in. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell your story. It's going to inspire a lot of people. Yeah, just you never give up. I started in Canada. <laughs> I was going to school. Uh, I want every, As every Indian parent says, hey, you're going to become a doctor. I, that was not for me. My mom was big in real estate. I went to school and I wanted to go into business at that point. She's like, okay. Uh, I said, I want to open a dealership. I always loved cars. I had a passion for cars. Um, let's talk about your dad for just a minute. Yeah. Is that cool? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Your dad dies when you were young. He died when I was 12 years old. Yeah. Okay. So let's My talk about like what that, what, that, what that 
did to your family, like what that yeah. does now. So I went from being 12 to 24 overnight. Hey guys, Andy Elliott. I'm sure you heard of the big two to three day event Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins just released on the internet, right? And by the way, I put that offer below. It's life changing. But guess what? The people that take action on this link below, I'm going to give them $40,000 in training for free. They're giving a money back guarantee offer on Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins training link below that their training will change your life. If not, they'll give you your money back. I'm adding all these bonuses because I'm partnering with them and I'm giving it all to you for free. And even if you get your money back, you keep all my stuff for free. That's how crazy this is. I'm gonna be doing three Zoom calls for one hour, how to build your courses, how to create content, literally how I generate 150 million views on social media every 30 days, how I get 1,500 leads a day organically into my company with zero ad spend or media spend. And by the way, you see this book I'm holding in my hand? I'm gonna give you this entire book right here. It's how to build a $100 million business and you're gonna have it A to Z. It's yours. Guys, I love you, I appreciate you. I'm telling you right now, I changed my life. My family's in a good place. I never imagine that things like this could happen for a guy like me I don't care what you've been through Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi's training below will change your life I'm gonna give you all of this $40,000 in training for free better than money back guaranteed click on the link below change your life now um, I have an older brother who basically took me on and raised me like I was his son but when you lose a parent it some people just can't recover from it but you have to understand that you know they're always looking out for you and they're always going to be watching over you, but you got to keep pushing forward. You cannot let yourself fall and break. You have to push through. And I learned that lesson from my mom. My mom was the strongest woman I've ever met in my life. Uh, you know, being East Indian, doing business, being a badass in business and, and being number one at it and still raising a family and devoting herself to me. She said, I love one man. I never loved anybody else. She didn't want to be with anybody else. She's only 47 when my dad passed away. Or 42, sorry. She's only 42 years old. My dad yeah, passed super, away. Yeah. To sacrifice everything at that point, that, that tells you, you know, kind of the upbringing we had. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you have this incredible mother. And obviously, I wanted to bring up the fact with your father because a lot of people, they say, well, you don't know what I've went through. Yeah. Do you listen. Yeah. I promise you. Nothing's harder than losing a parent. 100%. Or a child or something yeah. like that. So um, with that being said, you overcome adversity. Your mom's like, you're going to go become a doctor. You're going to go yeah. do this. But then your mom understands that you have this entrepreneurial spirit, yes. right? So, so then what happens? So as I'm going to school, she puts me in her, you know, show home. She was in real estate. So she puts me in her show homes and says, okay, cool. You want to get into business? Go work the show homes on weekends. So I went to work on the show homes on the weekends and she had 30 houses to sell at that time. And, you know, as a new home builder, you sell these houses in stretches. So I sold everything in one month. <laughs> And she's That's like, crazy. oh my God, how am I gonna how am I gonna build these fast enough? I'm gonna have people getting mad at me saying I can't meet possession dates. But so I sold through that and I said, I wanna go in the car business. I love cars. And she's like, Well, no, you can't do that. You gotta finish your degree first. I said, Mom, please let me open a dealership. She said, All right, go get your degree and then come talk to me and I'll help you get started. And that's kinda how it the whole ball started. So you rolling. finished your degree out and you yeah. said, I think your mom loaned you maybe 50, 50 grand, grand 50 to grand kind of start. get out and start get out and start which which 50 grand sounds like a lot of money but just to let everybody know 50 grand is nothing starting in business nothing it's absolutely nothing. yeah it's nothing and it so was more or less that she could live without that 50 grand if i lost it wouldn't have affected anything yeah so you took this 50 and then what happened i paid her back in six months and i was off the races i bought one car sold it bought another car sold it and one became two two became four four became six and it was just on from there and i opened a little small warehouse got started and uh, I would always go to the auctions and buy cars because back in the day, you you know, that's where you'd bet, get them at auctions or through Auto Trader. Mm -hmm. And so I'd look at Auto Trader and we had the book. Yeah, you you know, hustle have it. it online. So you, you go on Auto Trader, you have one week to get that car off the book and then put it on the new book, cleaned yeah. up, different pictures, whatever, write a description. So I'd buy the car, repicture it, clean it, write a nice description, and put it back up and wait for the phone to ring and then sell that one and then on to the next. Yeah. So that's how I kind of started getting the ball rolling. And then I was at auctions buying cars from these dealers and there was one dealer stood out and, you know, he was the biggest dealer in, in Canada at the time in Calgary where I grew up. And, uh, he said, Hey kid, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, you always got your hand up and I got like five guys with me. We're here to buy cars for these stores that I have, but you always put your hand up and you make me pay all the money. I said, well, I can't sell off empty shelves. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay, cool. Well, you got to come see me on Tuesday. And I went to go see him and, uh, he called his assistant into the room and says, Hey, uh, Sheila here, how many cars you have? I said, I think I have 13. She's like, write him a check for all his cars. And I said, 
okay, so now, thank you. And he's like, no, no, you work for me now. And I went to go work for him. I said, what about my lease on my property? He said, well, I own the building that you're in. He'd already talked to my mom. I didn't know that my mom and his mom were friends. So he'd already told her that mm -hmm. I'm going to take your son on board. And he, I went to work on him. He took you and uh, teach you to be an teach, operator. Yeah, teach me to be an operator. I was doing all <clears> the <throat> buying for all his <clears throat> stores. How old were you? I was 25 when that happened. Good. But I built it up to 25 on my own. Yep. So 25, you're on your own, and you probably said, "I'm never going to work for anybody." No. And you end up going into work for somebody because probably that experience of working for him allowed you to actually run your own companies today. I, when I was from the age 21 to now, or to 21 to 25, I was like, "Okay, cool. I love being an entrepreneur. I want to do it on my own." But I always saw, "Hey, look, these guys are bigger and they're better. How do? You, what's the one way you can?" be better is got to learn from somebody that is in it so I basically thought in my eyes it was a step back to take a step forward mm -hmm. but it actually was a step forward day one facts because when you go to learn you want to you want to be the best go follow the best that's and right when you follow the best someone like you that comes to you and says hey you know teach me how to do this you think I'm gonna tell you what to do I'm gonna listen to you even yeah. in my position I'm gonna listen to you because you're better at selling than me that's so good dude I always tell people this I say dude people now like traditional learning school and all that shit like that stuff's dying. And I'm not saying that. I don't want you to go to school. I'm saying it's dying. Mm -hmm. The learning, find someone who's been where you want to go. Find someone who has what you have. Find someone who's doing what you want to do. Get as close to them as possible. Learn everything they're doing. Exactly. It. And so like, so this guy mentors you, obviously teaches you to run multiple uh, things at one time. Yeah. You go into chaos land from this little small deal. You get into financing banks, this, that, all that's new to you. All of it. Because, you know, you're used to people just yeah. getting their own checks, their own money, Rich, flipping yeah, shit. Yeah, it was a, yeah, so I it's a, it, it's, a, it's the other side of business you needed to learn, the retail, yeah. um, in, internal side. Um, and then... Uh, then what happens? Your brother calls you, I think. Yeah, my, my mom <clears throat> my mom's health was always up and down. Now you live uh, in Canada right I now. I live in Canada at okay. that time. And the weather's cold. You know, it's like minus thirty degrees Celsius and you know, for That people, sucks balls. And for anybody that's older, you know, get your parents out of Canada because yeah. it's just hard on your body and you get older yeah. faster. Cold weather sucks for everybody. Yeah, so my brother calls me and he's like, Hey, mom's not doing good. But every time she'd come to Vegas to visit him, she'd be like a hundred times better. It's like, oh my God, it was like a new woman. So mm -hmm. he's like, hey, mom's not doing well. She got sick in Vegas. So I can't come in. So I remember I left the office at four o'clock. There was a seven o'clock WestJet flight. I ran home across town, grabbed a duffel bag, threw whatever I could throw in there. And I went to the airport, caught that flight. I was supposed to be in Vegas for three days or four days. I was there for six months. And I literally started from scratch. I had to come back to Canada, close everything down and go to Vegas and start from zero, mm -hmm. ground zero. Because I said, I, you have one mother, you have one father. I was never going to sacrifice that time to not be away from my mom. You, you, like I said, that is the most important thing for me. So if people can call me a mama's boy. I'll take it. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Well, if you got a good mom, why not? Yeah. You know. <clears throat> my mom left when I, my mom left when I was two, so I'm not a mama's boy. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but my wife was a good woman, and I love the hell out of my wife. That's exactly. So right. it's like when you find that love, you're like, dude, I'm taking care of this shit. This is nice. Um, but so you you moved to Vegas. Moved to Vegas. Right, and you literally open shop again. Yep, started from one car. <clears throat> I tried to find what I wanted to do, and when I was like looking, I was looking at the prices of stuff, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, these these prices are overpriced. And I started looking around, doing a little research, and I was like, there's a hole in the market here. So I bought one car. Again, started with 15 grand at that time. Bought one car. How were you hustling so and buying cars back then? I mean, obviously, Auto Trader, you know, things like that, but were you still old school? Yeah, by this hustling, time. Hustling, digging, yeah. grinding, back shelves, dealership, back lots, every. 100%. Every place you could find something with wheels that was cool that you knew was gonna gonna yeah. sell. Yeah, and, and another man's trash is another man's gold, right? Dude, so. I say this all the time. <laughs> so it's like I see shit and I'm like, dude, I gotta have that. And someone yeah. else is like, what do you get doing? rid of this? <laughs> yeah, and it's so sure. crazy. Um, and then you know where the asses are for that seat. There's always that's the secret. Yeah. yeah, but you know where they are and they're online. Hundred percent. You know, and I think you figured out the online deal Online's before coming. online was online. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. Buy, get it online, crush it. You know, the days and of people coming to a dealership and walking in and walk-ins, it's not dead, but it doesn't happen as much. Very rare. Yeah, it's it doesn't happen yeah. as much. So. Very rare. Yeah, if you're going to sit down, you're going to wait for somebody to come into your showroom floor, someone's going to put you out of business. 100%. Yeah, so you got to play the digital game, and we talked about it with some secrets to that, yeah. how you can destroy everybody. And even if we gave away all the secrets, I don't think anybody would even do it anyways. It's probably so right. everybody's so lazy. <laughs> it's probably right. Um, you know, I learned that you could tell everybody what to do. Hey, how do you get in shape? You go tell someone how to do it. They still don't do it. 
you tell someone to go and how to open 300 car lot and then sell them all online, yeah, yeah, they still won't do it. It doesn't matter. Here's Andy. Five years ago, he was a car salesman. He went to one of our first events we first started, quit selling cars. He's one of the fastest growing sales training organizations in the country. He's this year on target, he tells us to do $100 million in revenue. That's extreme. Hey guys, you just heard it from Tony Robbins himself. He just said it. Literally a $100 million business we built in the last four years from Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins freaking training. It's your turn right now. They just released an offer to the world, which you can click the link below and get right now, but stop because I'm going to give you a better than money back guarantee and I'm adding all kinds of bonuses to it, all right? So holding in my hand right now is a book. It's called the $100 million A to Z and the Elliott build. This is the Empire build. You want a $10 million business? Cool. You want to build a hundred? I've got it per year and I'll give it to you on my way to a billion. It'll teach you how to generate 150 million views every 30 days on social media. It'll show you how to build a sales team. I'm going to teach you how to become the world's greatest salesperson. Three hours of Zoom training, me teaching you how to I create my courses, how do I create my memberships, how do I form and make my offers. I'm going to show you how to do it. If you can make one hour a week, one hour a week work, I can show you how to make an additional hundred grand a week. So I love you guys. I'm going to give you all these bonuses, literally $40,000 is in bonuses for free money back guarantee better than money back, which means even if you return Dean's and Tony's training that you buy below, even if you returned it, you get to keep all mine for free. Okay. You can't beat that anywhere in the world. It worked for me. It's going to work for you. Click on the link below. We'll get you guys set up now. Let's change your family's life. Um, but, but long story short, um, so you, you build one at a time, you buy these buildings or rent these buildings and you start in yep. basically an in-house warehouse. I started from one location that was 4,000 square feet. I outgrew that location uh, in six months. I was busting at the seams. And then I went and took another space that was like this area that we went into in Vegas was condemned. It was right near the, sh the strip. It was like after 08 in Vegas, everybody got wiped out. There was mm -hmm. nobody left. So for me to go take these buildings, it wasn't a big heavy lift at the time mm -hmm. and so i convinced the landlord please give me a chance He's like do you really want to be in there i said yeah absolutely so i painted the building set it up the warehouse no air conditioning for the first three years i had any air conditioning you know how hot it gets yeah but you didn't swamp need that coolers shit. i didn't care it's a warehouse it was yeah. a storage lot yeah and plus dude when you're when you're you were out of the dealership mode you you know when you were a hustler and you were on the warehouse deal your own little warehouse yeah your own little buildings dude a luxury like you're not thinking about air and shit no. like that you're thinking about how can I photo this? Where where am I going to post it? Where's my buyer going to come from? Yeah. How am I going to deliver it? You know, um, what description am I going to write? And 100%. where am I going to find my next car? Hundred percent. And how many of those can I buy? And you're just on a freak mode frenzy. Yep. So comfort, like you're not even interested in it because you're not sitting down, not for a second, not at all, all day. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're detailing ground. your own shit. You're and wiping down. I was doing all of that. Dude, listen. As a matter of fact, when I photo stuff, like when I was in the auto business. I would go out and literally before I, I shot every car, I would tire shine the cars. I would wipe the wheels down. I would look back. I would make sure everything was perfect. I'd put filters on my phone. I would move the car two more inches, move the car <laughs> yeah. three more inches. You have to. Where, where's that shadow coming from? So analytical. Like, okay, when people look online, they're going to say, holy shit, like, babe, look at this. That's what I wanted with my cars. One thing for us is online, and I'll give it a little tip for everybody is like you are your brand online mm. and it's repetitive it's your schema it's what's in your head when you see something over and over and over again you're going to recognize it you're going to affiliate it when i see that name on the t-shirt i know that that's that brand so when you go online that's your audience's you know the world online mm -hmm. so you have to have the consistency in pictures and when you have and the consistency, consistency it doesn't exist pound. in any companies anymore no and that's the problem they want to yeah. do one here one there one mm -hmm. shot here it's like well now that you've got that. now that you've gotten big, right? I'm sure mm -hmm. you got lots of employees. There's lots of moving parts. There's yeah. lots of people. There's lots of stuff. How do you keep what you? I'm just gonna ask you. How do sure. you keep what you did in the very beginning that built your business? How do you keep that in other people when you're no longer doing that? I teach them and explain to my staff guys that are on my team. We have a staff of approximately 50 people, and. I teach them what I did and I say just follow these small procedures and I make it really cookie cutter easy and I teach them and I explain to them why they have to do it. If mm -hmm. they don't understand the why, they're that's not going to do it. So people, you can tell someone to do something, but if you don't explain why and that's how they comprehend it sometimes, okay, I understand why Nick wants me to do it like this, then they'll do it. Yep. And so that's how I kind of maintain that with the way the pictures are shot or the way the videos are shot or the way the descriptions are written or the way the cars are parked. Are you OCD? 
neurotic like beyond. I'm like, dude, I used to sit back and I would, <laughs> I would, I was a general manager. We were selling 500 cars a month. I would literally have my guys watch the desk and I like, they're running it. Yeah. And I would say, I know this is where we make money, but really the money's made back in that photo bay. You're you guys right. don't get it. It ain't here. It's there. I'll be back. And I would go and I would go back to that bay and I would sit there and I'd be like, dude, why did you take that picture, bro? You can't take it from that end. <laughs> open the door, roll the window down. You, you got to shoot through the window. You can't just open the door and shoot through the seat. Don't show the carpet. Show the seat up. Show up. Don't show down. Make both the seats align. You don't want to have one Dude, sitting forward, one, one seat back. Dude, if one seat is this, one seat's that, I trip out. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> you and me are speaking Dude, the same. Like, if there's a piece of trash in the floor, I oh will lose it. My guys will tell you the same thing. They're, they're probably laughing when they watch yeah. this. They're like, oh, Dude, guys, he's nuts. a check engine light in a picture. Oh, my gosh. I mean, any, I mean, anything. A, a, a gas light. Anything. Anything to trigger someone to turn off. Yeah. I, I can't hate. And by the way, I would say, listen, if you can only get 25 pictures, but I tell you to photo 30, I'll take 25 great pictures over you sliding in five just yeah. to try to make me happy. If you, if the, if the photo doesn't look perfect, one bad picture turns someone off. hundred percent. Just one. It says 25, right? One wrong. They're gone. The cars we sell aren't uh, needs. They're wants. There's mm -hmm. a difference. So when you want something, you want the best of it. And you're spending that kind of money, it has to be absolutely perfect. So when you're looking at those photos, you're essentially buying that car mentally online before you even call me. On the That's phone. right. You, you're 50% sold. I'm the other 50%. Yeah, you've test drove it already you're, mentally. You're, it's, you're it's already, a, really, really, we're in the era of the mental test drive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people, they envision themselves owning it. They, they take the mental test drive. Even videos. I'm analytical on videos, the way it starts, the way it finishes, who was walking in the background, the noises, was there music when you sent it over? What did you say? What did you look like? Mm -hmm. Like, like everything has to be a plus, 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 plus game. hundred percent. You have you to know? always be on. Yeah. So my company, we, uh, we have almost a hundred people here, right. Um, on payroll and it's, it's been the hardest thing to get everyone on the same page. We, we do it, but it's like the second that we teach it and then they do it for three months, then one falls off. Yep. And I'm just like, I, I don't get it cause I don't fall off. Not I can't like it's, it's to me, it's like someone trying to take my business out. Yeah. You know I what I'm saying? hundred percent. Yeah. Because you know, the way that you do things is the reason why you're winning. And when your team does that, you'll continue to win. We do it different. But everybody's think. dying to turn you into every other car lot. 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100%. When and they it, come from other stores, I don't want people that have experience either. Yeah. It's funny. I'd rather take them green and train them the way I want them Facts. because they come with bad habits. Keep your bad habits over there. Yeah. Well, there's a, there, there's a, uh, almost I'm seeing in every industry right now, it used to be 10 years ago mm -hmm. or even 20, people would say, hey, we're looking for people with this resume that have done this before with lots of experience. You know, now no. people are like, if you've been in our industry, don't apply. Yeah. We're looking for people who are coachable, who are hungry, who have great attitudes and who are willing to work crazy hard. crazy how that flipped around. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. So like if you, people every day, they, they email me, Hey Andy, I'm a sales trainer. Hey Andy, I sold high ticket shit. Hey Andy, I do this. I'm like, not interested. Yeah. But this guy's like, Hey Andy, my dad died when I was 10. I've overcame adversity. I take care of my mother. I want to make sure that. You know, I give my family a good life. I believe in myself. I'm in the gym working out every day. I self-develop. That's what I do. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, who's this guy? Yeah. And I'm like, and there's no skill. But because they work harder on themselves, I know that if I can just teach them how to do the job, they're going to kill it. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video as you're watching my buddy Nick here. He owns the baddest ass dealership in the country. He can get his hands on anything you want. Hell, he probably already has it. But if he doesn't, reach out to him. He'll have it. He literally got my wife her Ferrari in 10 minutes. Exactly what we wanted. And it was about 70 grand less than we were going to pay somewhere else. And you may say, damn, that's a lot of money. Dude, it is a lot of money. But the cool thing about it is he got exactly what he wanted. He took great care of us and he personally delivered it. So... If you guys don't know Nick, make sure you go to his website, make sure you go follow him on his business account on Instagram, and you can even DM him on his personal account. Let's get back to the video. 
And, and so my wife was very big in uh, marketing as well. She has a publication. She's a publisher in a magazine. So she helped me get a lot of my clients. She wrote articles about me and stuff like that. It got the word out. And that's and great. Pe those things sit around. I know print is dead, but it's just, again, no, it's, it's all there, man. Schema. It's still there. I mean, look, um, blogs. Yeah. If you put it online, um, they that's still terrible. SEO, SEM, they still pull keywords. Google still registers blogs as as stronger seo than almost anything yep you know if you go to anywhere in the world right now i mean anywhere and i know you've never done this but if you did do this anywhere in the world anybody watching this go to google okay. google's the mother of the world of course youtube is the second largest search engine in the world second largest google's number one now google owns youtube right so how i grew my business is i went to google right and i typed in car sales training because I wanted to get into automotive training, right? Sure. And when I did that, it said people also search for. And all those keywords, all those, uh, how to make gross as a salesman, how to bump a customer on payment, how to overcome the price objection, how to over... I took all those and then I went to YouTube, which was the second largest search engine, and I made a YouTube video. I called it that title. I taught that video how to overcome that problem. Smart. I uploaded it on YouTube and I titled the video car sales training dot dot how to overcome prices too high. And I made thousands of videos with every Google search ever sure. made for car sales training. So everything that you go to Google right now, so anybody in the world, they go type in car sales training. Mm -hmm. You got paid ads, which are the top five things people have paid to set there and people don't pull those anymore. They don't, they're like, now nah, that guy paid for that. It says sponsored. So they always go underneath that and they see organically, who is Google telling me is the expert in this field? And out of like 10 million available things to search, Andy Elliott, Andy Elliott, Andy it. Elliott, Andy Elliott, YouTube video, YouTube video, YouTube video, YouTube video, YouTube video. That's and I pulled all that. Um, but so we used to write blogs mm -hmm. everywhere, every day on the internet. I got this blog writer and it was like, you, it would score you one to 10, how well your blog was by your SEO keywords. And I would literally, instead of writing a blog, I would be like, I would just be writing it to look at my score. And it would be, if you're looking for the number one training video on the internet, how to sell cars it and make more gross profit and, and help your customers, this is Andy Alley. Like I'm watching the deal and I could get them to score eight to 10, I would release it. Perfect. And then I would just make them and I would stay up all night long writing blogs. And now you're the best at it. Had, yeah, and I wrote a blog um, in in three years, but I wrote them for two years straight. But the two years straight I wrote them with all the YouTube videos mm -hmm. I make, which we still make, they they flooded Google's heart. And now, car sales training, even now, Comes up we're pulling that. sales training. And we're almost there. We almost got sales training pulling us. And so now we've got over 4,000 videos on YouTube, long form, about us teaching. I like that. So crazy, man. Such a cool crazy. time to be such alive. A such a different way of doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's always a way in, man. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, like, earlier, um, mm -hmm. uh, I was sitting here with my video guy, and right here in this chair, I make calls, right? So I know you've seen my call, if you've yeah. ever seen my calls, my dealer calls, mm -hmm. but I literally call dealers one by one. And I call <laughs> them right here. Yeah, John, I was calling to get some information on the 2017 F-150 I saw on the internet. And I have stock number price. Yeah. And I'd be like, I bet he's not going to get my name. Yeah. And they never do because they don't give a fuck. And then I would say, okay, hey, John, I, by the way, what are the miles? Yeah, he's going to put me on hold. Okay. Clearly nobody walks their inventory anymore. Yeah. Nobody knows anything you that's going on. Car. They're that's sitting on their ass. Yeah. yeah, waiting for something. They're like fishermen, waiting for yeah. something to bite instead of a that's lion smart. hunting. And then I say, okay, he don't know. Okay, watch. Okay, and then they tell me the miles, and I say, oh, man, I was hoping there were about 10,000 less. I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep looking. Okay, have a good day. I'm like, bro, you're going to let me off the phone that quick? Yeah, crazy. I'm like, or the price is too high. Can I get a better deal? If you come it's, to me, I'm not letting you off the phone. Oh, dude, what? I'm not letting you off the phone. You took you the out. time to call <laughs> me out of the other 10 million people you could call in the world, and here I am wondering if you're fucking serious? <laughs> yes. What? Dude, you called me. This person wants to do business. They're not dumb. They're going to have concerns. They're going to have um, uncertainty. Is this the right one? 
Are we salespeople? Holy shit. Sales 101, you gotta be able to overcome any obstacle. Yeah. And if you don't, that's where these guys get lost in translation. They're like, oh, okay, cool. They're not order takers. We're not McDonald's. Yeah, it's, it's, and I say the same shit, dude. The guy calls me, he's like, I think the miles are a little too high. I'm like, hey, first of all, number one, one to 10, this car's an 11. If I had 100 of these, I could literally sell 100 today. I know you said 60,000 miles is too high. You really wanted 40, but I'm going to tell you, if you were here and I covered the odometer, you think this car had 5,000 miles on it. Okay, look, this is a 2021 model, and I know you're wanting to buy something pre-owned because you don't want to spend new car money, but this car looks as nice as a new one. Matter of fact, I'm looking out the window. It's a 2021 sitting next to a 2025 model, and you can't tell the difference between either one of them. That's how nice this 2021 is. So if you're looking for the best deal on the market and you don't want the nicest car, totally cool. Go to the cheapest price. But if you're looking for the nicest car on the market with the best price, that's the one that I got. You got to paint the picture. It's like, gang, gang, gang. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like dude where did sales go sales is dead yeah it's dead it's dead in every company and that's why people right now are saying oh the market's messed up oh interest rates are too high <laughs> no bitch your sales team sucks <laughs> yes that's true how about that how about yeah. the economy's amazing they print free money you live in the united states come my on top, my shut top your sale mouth guy cr- crushes it and he's he's learned from me he was there with me when i started uh, with one car in the showroom here in Vegas and built it up. And he was with me for now. He's my top sales guy. He yeah, of course he is because you mentored him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, uh, one of the greatest things that you could do, and I want to go back to something real quick. You said when you were in Canada, you left, went to your mom, yeah. right? Um, what did the guy say when <clears throat> you left? He said... Because you, you were running his stores yeah, said, or you were helping him operate them. Um, says, you'll be missed. It'd be hard to replace you. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best. If you were here, you'd be taking over my operation. Okay. So I want to tell you exactly what that guy said to you doesn't exist in the world anymore. Yeah. If anyone goes, Hey man, I think I'm going to go do something else. Hey man, you know, this came up the car business. No disrespect car guys. They, you. they say eat shit. Yeah. He's not you know what? Anywhere else. <laughs> you're not going to make it. Yeah. Okay. You're really going to choose your mother over this how's your mother going to be able to make it when she don't have money yeah bro they i don't even understand and by the way listen to me some of you say why that's not me oh i'm not talking about you then i am talking about we literally need more leaders in this world and in the automotive space the transportation space the most the transportation space makes billionaires yeah like not even millionaires it makes billionaires if you can do it right i don't mean billionaire salesmen i mean billionaire operators course it, it can and all you got to do is hire the right team 100 percent. hire the have the right processes have the right core values take care of people turnover is so big in the automotive space because nobody takes care of anybody and there's such a big shortage of leadership yeah you're absolutely right yeah so i love what you told me when that guy said hey man love you wish you the best if you were here we would kill it together but go yeah. take care of your mom yeah when i heard that i was like dude that's so cool man like that shit just doesn't exist anymore. But that was good for you because now you take good care of your people. And I know like that guy bought all your cars. Yeah. You know that in order to acquire good people, you got to take care of them. hundred percent. Yeah. He didn't say, Hey man, go sell your cars and come back and see me and I'll give you a job. No. He said, Hey, Jan, stroke this guy a check, pay his cars off. Yeah. Okay. Let's figure out what we're going to do next. I got big plans for him. Yeah. Because do people love seeing that people if you see potential? It's when you got to harness that. You got to take that and, and bring that person onto your team. That's no what, one does that. man. People don't see opportunity. They don't see it. Yeah. Well, opportunity to me is people. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love marketing, right? I love having the right inventory. I love, uh, having big, beautiful buildings and showroom floors, yeah. but having the right people is how you win. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause you could have all the right cars. But if your people don't handle those calls right, it doesn't exactly. matter. Yeah, you could have all those cars, but if the people don't do like how you believe, does it matter? So technically, everything operates and goes down to the leader and how the leader believes and what the leader's standards are yeah. is how the company will operate. So if anybody's watching this, I would take an old ass building, one that is trash, yeah, a place that I could store my cars. Give me a give me a photo bay, right? Give me a good camera. Yeah. Let me write some descriptions. And I would literally bankrupt the nicest showroom floor in the country. And it could be done. With good people. Yeah, with good people. Mm-hmm. You are your team. Yeah, and no one ever knows, man. Because listen, dude, I always say this. When someone calls on the phone, they can't tell if you're sitting in Trump Tower or sitting in a trash can. They don't know. It's all on how you sound. What's exactly. going on, man? Hope you have the best day of your life. Andy yeah. Elliott, what's up? <laughs> They're like Trump Tower. When we got on the phone, you didn't. You had no idea who it was for a second. And no. It worked out Well, great. because at the end of the day, it's like, I think... 
it doesn't matter who people are. It matters the value that they bring to you. I brought value to you. You bring value to me. We do business together. We take care of each other. This is just how good business works. This Absolutely. is this is how good life works. Mm -hmm. I truly think, uh, someone was asking me the other day, they said, uh, work, life, what's the balance? There is no balance. It's work-life integration. It's all integration. Uh, okay, so what does that mean? That means everything is one. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. when you're a badass, everything is one. There's no two, there's no switches, it's all one. We're present where we are, if I'm with my my, my daughters, I'm with my daughters. If I'm with my wife, I'm with my wife. If I'm at work, I'm at work. My wife knows sometimes at dinner I have to take a phone call. My daughters know sometimes when we're playing I have to take a phone call. I also, everything is work-life integration. I also have my kids at work a lot of the times when we're working. It's work-life integration. It is all one. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's acquaintances, there's customers, or there's friends, and then there's family. 100%. Okay, so to me, there's like, if I'm gonna do business with you, you're my friend. You're not my client, you're my friend. Mm -hmm. I talk to you like you're my friend. I talk to you like familiarity, like we've known each other our whole life. Of course. People don't do that anymore. Pick up the phone, listen to your guys talk, call a dealership. I love, one of the greatest training things you can ever do to train your team, call another dealership and just ask some simple questions about a vehicle they have in stock and ask your team this, do they talk to us like they know us? Are they talking to us like their familiarity? They've been friends with us for a long time. They know who we are. Or are they talking to us like we don't know each other and you can just fill that wall between us? Like, like, and then they're gonna ask us at some point to do something. And matter of fact, every one of these people I called, nobody asked my name. Nobody gave a shit about anything. And the first thing out of their mouth is, when do you wanna come see it? Yeah. It's like, dude, you lazy piece of shit, man. <laughs> they think it's a lay down. And, and by the way, it isn't 1999 anymore. No. So when you say, when do you want to come see it? Mr. and Mrs. Customer, where are you calling from today? Yeah. That's the first question you should ask. And by the way, if I was to take a call and you were to call me, hope you're on the best day of your life. This is Andy down here at ABC Motors. How can yeah. I serve you today? Yeah, I was calling about X, Y, and Z car. Hey, no problem. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Bro, I'm going to stop you in your tracks. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? My name's Nick. Nick, it's yeah. a pleasure to meet you. Nick, I just reset my computer. It's going to take me about 30 seconds. Then I'm going to get you all the information you need, okay? By the way, where are you calling from today, Nick? Have you had the chance to drive one of these yet? How, hey. how did you get in the market for one of these? Qualify them. Bro, I just want to know, what, want to know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, I just want to get you talking. Yeah. How about that? Like, if I get you talking, we become better it brings, friends. It brings their guard down one, and you're also picking up the things that you need to bring back in closing conversations later on. Yeah, and you get People to figure out where they're at in the buying funnel. 100%. Like, did this dude just drop in the market today because he totaled his F-150, so he wants another one just yeah. like it, and you happen to have one on the internet, and this dude isn't at the top where he's open. This dude's at the bottom, and if you say you have it, he's wiring the money and coming. Yeah. Or is the guy like, oh, man, I don't know. I think we need a truck in the family. Yeah. And then like, you're like, well, dude, listen, I got Toyotas and Fords and Chevys and I got Dodges and I got everything you need. And we got Raptors and we got this, we got that. Bro, I got everything you need. It's like, is he there or is he there? Well, they don't know because they don't ask. They're just order takers. You said, welcome to McDonald's. I say it all the time, dude. <laughs> I, so I can't believe it. But honestly, we are in the era of the worst salesman in the history of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, when you treat people right, um, no one else does. People will choose to buy off you no matter what, because you've spoke to them differently than anyone else speaks to them. I built my business on customer service. Yeah. That's that's our key. That's customer true. service is a superpower. The, you have to, you have to. Customer service is like go above and beyond. You have one chance to do it right, just do it right the first time. They don't want to know that, oh, hey, this didn't come in, or I forgot to fill up the car with gas before I delivered it. Like that is the, that's those are the little shit. things that, yeah. they, they, they just leave a bad taste. You know, they just leave a bad taste in their mouth. And it, it sucks for people because they don't realize that, that that they remember that. They don't remember how good the car was. Like, oh, that guy gave me a car with empty tank gas. Can you believe that? I spent 300 grand with him and he gave me a car on empty. That shit pisses me That's off. That's not going to say, they're not going to say, oh, look at this car that was sick. Now what? Everything's perfect. So what are you going to say now? Yeah, we, we have a saying in our company. It says the little things aren't important. The little things are everything. 100%. So every, people don't get pissed off for big shit. They get pissed off for little shit. little shit. Yeah. The little shit is like, come on, man. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> you, like you could have messed up something big, but you screwed that up. Yeah. 
to me, that makes me think less of you on the little shit than the big shit. Because if you don't pay attention to little shit, then how do I know you're taking care of the big shit? Yeah, so true, man. Um, so, guys, everybody watching this, listen, number one, you guys uh, have heard me rap with Nick here just a little bit. Um, automotive. I got in when I was 18 years old. Um, got out at 39. I'm 44 today. Built a big business really quick. Um, I learned. I trained myself to get ready for another industry and another life and recreated myself and um, I love seeing how people can change. I love seeing people build their lives. Um, there's 20 million different ways yeah. uh, to win, okay? And every time that I interview somebody, I'm like, I wanna know how you won. Uh, I wanna know what got in your way. What were the things that made you almost wanna quit, right, and, and stop? And I didn't get into a lot of hardships with you, but there were probably a million along the way and there were a million reasons to quit. So many. Yeah to quit, go, maybe go back to work for someone else, uh, maybe get into another line of business, mm -hmm. and you stuck it through. I always say the superpower is just sticking it through. Um, you know, and, but you gotta learn every day, and you gotta become a better person every day. You, know, um, you, you had options, you know, your mom raised you right, your dad was a great man, you, know, you, you learned this business, but being in the automotive business for a long time, I see a lot of people that lose their core values from being in this business for a long time. You do. And the fact that you've stayed true to your <clears throat> standards, um, that's important. I think that that's the main lesson to everybody is know who you want to be. Surround yourself with those people. Make sure you're around people who are better than you are. If you want to do something big, go find someone who's doing, done something big and get close Learn to them. them. Yeah, and most importantly, like, dude, like, everything's possible, okay? And some people are made to be entrepreneurs, which take all the risk, all of the liability. I mean, they spend all the money, they upfront all the cash. And then there's intrapreneurs. And I want to tell everybody, like, entrepreneurship is, like, the greatest thing in the world. Like, 90% of the world can be a badass entrepreneur for an entrepreneur and blow their shit up and get paid a ton of money. 100%. You know, at the end of the day, me and my wife were sitting up last night, and I'm running on about three hours of sleep for, like, literally the 10th day. And I keep saying, tonight we're going to get sleep, babe. And she's like, don't you lie to me. <laughs> but then tonight, we get home, we got to start, you know, bills, this, that, and just it never stops it never it never stops we're having this us. now but people are like oh your life must be easy dude listen to me no it's it's 2 a.m every night it really is people are like well well that's not what i see listen to me it's 2 a.m every night it's hell but it's worth it it's my purpose this is what i was meant to do and so when you think about that if you're like oh hell no you need to be the greatest entrepreneur that ever existed you won't have to go through any of that. Find someone that's willing to go through that, help blow their business up, help make their customers um, happy, Agreed. increase profits, find buckets of money and holes that they don't see, and execute and be the hardest worker and you know be a great leader. And so I just was saying that you know that your calling was to be an entrepreneur. You did the entre entrepreneur deal, mm -hmm. but a lot of people go and they try to become an entrepreneur because we're in an era where everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. They all want to be entrepreneurs, but if they just take the time and actually realize that hey. I can help this person get to the next level, then do that because that person will probably take you on and you'll make just as much as you would if you were an entrepreneur. I say that all the and time. I don't get why people don't do that. I tell they, my guys all the time, dude, I say, listen to me, everybody thinks the owners make all the money. Dude, there's a lot of owners that don't make very much money at all and they pay their people a lot of money. Yep. They're, in the beginning of my, <laughs> my career uh, of being a business owner, I had guys that were making more money than me. And I was like, maybe I should just sell. Yeah. But I was like, this stop. By the way, I want to go back to purpose. I was like, that's not my purpose. I know that I was built to do this. Yes. I knew that I was going to build this for the people that were going to go with me. Yep. And so that's what I did, and that's what you did, man. So I'm super that. proud of you. Thank you. Um, guys, as you're, as you're watching, Nick, I know that you guys have made it to this point in the video. You're the true one percenter. Make sure you guys go follow him on Instagram. Make sure you guys get all of your cars bought off him, okay? Unless you're driving like a Chevy Malibu or some shit, but I'm sure Nick can still fly that. We'll okay? find it. <laughs> and I'm not being I'm not being weird, okay? I'm saying Malibus are cool. They're good on gas mileage if you drive a long ways. I'm sure Nick will hunt one back down for you. But he also can get some really cool shit, which is his baby. Um, but whatever it is that you need, make sure you DM them on Instagram. You can check out their pages on Instagram. You can go to their website. And, um, you know, he's a good friend of mine. We're kicking ass together. I'm, I'm using him to do all my business. Um, if I have a great resource, I just want to let you guys know about it. That's it. 
And that's the cool thing about this world. If somebody has something, if somebody's got a good doctor, I'm like, dude, I want that doctor too. Yep. Um, I'm getting stem cell tomorrow, put my shoulders, right? My Oof. shoulders have messed up for a while. So there's this great stem cell doctor. He's amazing. And I've been wanting to do stem cell for like two or three years for my shoulders. It's going to be great. And, you know, like it's super expensive, right? Which yeah. I'm cool with, but like, who do I use? Where do I go? People are like, go to Costa Rica, go here, go there, go to this, they go, go, go to Dallas. And I'm like, and then my buddy is like, bro, I got this guy. He runs this massive stem cell company. And I'm like, like, what's like, can you introduce me? He's like, yeah, I get on the phone. He introduces me. He's my guy's good buddy. The guy's like, dude, I'll fly out tomorrow, man. It's <laughs> great. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I know exactly who you are, bro. He's like, I watch your shit all the time. I love it. He goes, listen, man, I'm going to give you a, a, a badass deal. I'll hook you up. He's like, I'm going to fly out tomorrow. Um, he's going to give my wife a shot in her back, on her lower back, where she's had a little bit of trouble. Um, dude, now he's coming to me. Things are easy. He's made it easy. He's bringing the stem cell out. He's going to do the stem cell IV deal. I got all this set up. He said he can do it once a month, not the, not the injections, but the stem cell IV. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn. I'm like, bro, my buddy had this dude in his back pocket who's his friend. And now I wanted that. Now I get what he has because it's like the connection. Yep. And so now That's I'm connecting you with everybody. All Thank of you, you guys, 100% of the world needs a car. Okay. Guys, make sure you check out his website. Make sure you guys stay close to him. If you know somebody that needs a badass car that buys badass shit, make sure you pass Nick's information on to them. That's how we do things. We're a badass family. We take care of each other. 100%. Yeah. So Nick, Thank I appreciate you, you brother, man. Seriously, guys, we love you. We'll see you in the next podcast. Let's kick some ass. See you soon. Let's go. It's time to be the goat. It's time to hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. Now it's game time.